Moving along to the next question from Dave. What's a good fidget pen? A pen to hold and fidget while pondering deep questions. P.S. I play chess and the pocket knife I hold isn't very well accepted. <laughs> that's that's a little less of a PC fiddling, uh, fidgeting, you know, uh, instrument. Uh, Drew, I know you fidget with your, your coins. You like to like play with I your coins. I fidget with everything. But yeah, yeah I do. I, I have a, I keep coins every day. Let's see. Today it is mm. a, let's see. We've got a 1874 half dollar, Brian. Mm. It's, it says half doll with half a dot. Half doll. A half, half doll. doll. Yeah. That's cool. This is one of the uglier eagles they've had. But mm. um, yeah, this is the seated Liberty half dollar. So there she's just kind of. She's just kind of chilling. But yeah, okay. um, I do that. I fiddle with my pens, obviously. Mm -hmm. I fiddle with my loop that is now like super on the floor. Um, <laughs> I was going to say super floppy because it's just been it spun around so many times. Yeah. But um, anyway, yes, uh, I have some ideas for you, Dave. Yeah. Um, first idea is to replace your knife with some sort of medieval weapon so no one takes you seriously. Like if you show up with a mace or a morning star, like mm. no one's going to be like, he's going to hit me with that. But yet you can still be threatening and intimidating with your chess game. Mm. Um, knife, knife is like, mm, he might actually do something with that. Mm. Anyway. And it, it'll be on theme too with the whole like, you know, castle knight. Yeah, thing. absolutely. He's just castle. in character. Rook. I know it's called a rook. Oh my gosh. Why did I call it a castle? That's fine. Castle I mean, it, theming, it, you know, king, queen, that whole thing. Well, it, it's a, it's a, it's a castle. That's fine. It's a. It's called a rook. It's not called a castle. I know. That's I like, know. that's like, like, that's like when people call it a, you know. A, the horse. Uh, yeah. Or they call it a nip instead of a nib or whatever. You're like, you really oh God, don't yeah. know fountain Stop pens. It. Or like, a nub. On. Yeah. yeah, they're like the tip, Mine. the tip of the yeah, and you're like, no, it's a nib. Come on now. I think that Brian and I would both agree that the Caveco Supra is one of the best fiddling pens mm. out there. You can take it all apart. You can yeah. basically convert it from a full size pen to a pocket pen with a removable middle section there, and oh, yeah. that middle section can attach somewhere else. So it's a lot of fun. Um, the Platinum Curados. Um, I still have one around here somewhere from a video that we did. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a fun one because it you can take it apart. The clip's removable. A bunch of the internal parts are removable. But this thing, that is a big honk and click right there. <laughs> and it's pretty satisfying. Now, it's also probably going to be annoying. Mm. I'm not sure if this is bothering you yet, mm. but it's bothering me. But it's still fun. Um, but uh, I think that that could irritate somebody. And um, if you're trying to play a nice, quiet game of chess, perhaps mm. that's not the best thing. The Resin Homo Sapiens by Visconti, those are a lot of fun to activate the hook safe lock mechanism. Mm. The uh, the, mag the lava pens, the, you know, the volcanic resin or whatever, those click less satisfyingly, in my opinion. Don't mm. uh, You know what just I'm talking more, about, Brian? There's a little more resistance to them. Yeah, yeah, but with the resin ones, they snap. They like... Mm pop snap and oh my god yeah. they're so good so they they snap a lot more clean so those are a lot of fun the if there's a spring-loaded inner cap that gives you that you know kerthunk that is very very appealing mm. and the diplomat arrow is a lot of fun not only does it have a really really satisfying capping but just removing the barrel from the grip section you know some of them if you get the right one you can actually spin it and have it you know, kind of spiral onto the grip section. So I always like undo it and do it and undo it and do it, try to get that good spin happening. Again, probably annoying. Um, and if you did not want to be annoying or loud, which I mean, come on, who doesn't like that? Uh, you could try the Esterbrook SD. That has this beautiful cushion cap. Again, it's a spring-loaded inner cap that makes it so that you have to kind of push and turn in order to thread the cap onto the barrel. But that 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 cushion is really, really nice. So undoing it, when you unscrew it, it kind of pops out because that spring uh, you know loses resistance mm -hmm. when you the cat when the threads are loosened. So that's a really, really satisfying one several, and uh, quiet. Several Tachia pens also have that same kind of like cushion cushiony cap kind of a Oh yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, the one I fiddle with the most of any pen mm. is going to be a retro fifty one roller ball. Just with one hand unscrewing it and screwing it um the uh this knurled um twist at the top ejects and retracts the rollerball tip that you can do quietly over and over and over again no risk of wearing anything out i seriously do this all day long um and no one knows uh, i would recommend a retractable another retractable but 
I wouldn't do this obnoxiousness with a gold nib, so stick with I mean, Kyrados on that one. I think you could use that strategically if you're playing a game against someone. You can like click it, you know, sort of like when you like yipe at somebody as they're trying to like do a golf swing or something. You can like strategically try to like mess with their head. I don't know. You certainly could. You certainly could. Or you could, you know, um, just start dropping loops all over the floor like I do. Yeah, or drop coins it's on all, your desk. That definitely gets all, attention. It's all a mind game. I, my, my coin didn't fall yet. If I do this enough but, time, it will. I, yeah. the people all over the office know whenever I'm around because you hear coins just fall on the ground and well, hear me curse only, under my breath. Not only do you hear the coin, but Drew's also like, bah, 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 and he's making hand gestures. So it's like, yeah. You know, you, you, Adam, you know Adam, though, Adam, you always know when Adam's walking around. He's our uh, fulfillment manager. He whistles and hums everywhere he's going. So Yes, just, sings, yeah. He, yep. Like um, walk, and then like finally, I will say, box. oh, no, I've got two more. I've got the Pilot E95S, the mm. cap on that one, both caps Ooh. and posts. So immensely smooth. satisfying. Yeah, very, very smooth. And there's no clicking happening. It's super quiet. So you could do that over and over again. No problem. And then finally, um, I would choose uh, a Twisby Eco. I have a VAC 700 here, um, but a Twisby Eco has a, one of the most clear barrels of mm. just about any fountain pen. Fill this thing with some heavy shimmer ink, like golden sands or mm. you know golden barrel or something like that. And honestly, it's like you know such a great fidget thing. You can just turn it around, watch this, watch the shimmer settle twist it watch it resettle like that that's a great one too again super quiet and that's my list brian what do you think good stuff um yeah i had to i had to read this question twice because i was thinking about pens that are fun to fiddle with as you're like cleaning them taking them apart kind of thing but you know obviously that wouldn't work as you're you know just going about your day trying to actually keep the pen inked up so uh i agree with you on the supra i think that is a great one though you do end up because i've had this the supra is a pretty heavy pen so if you end up dropping any of those components like on the oh, desk yeah. or something like that it makes loud clunks so you know be conscious of that um so as an alternative to a little fiddly brass pen i have the um traveler's pen so it's a little teeny one you do get some of the satisfying you know kind of like snapping and you know the 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 it's not definitely not as smooth as the E95S, but it has some like pressure bars in there that also slide it in place, which can be pretty satisfying. But also it's got this little like lanyard top that screws in that you can unscrew the clip and then Ooh. you can take the clip off. Uh, sometimes I'll turn the clip upside down and just screw it on like that just to <laughs> be an agent of chaos <laughs> because you can like I'll literally, yeah, if, I, yeah, have the, if yeah. I have this pen, I'll just do that. And then I'm like, oh, that looks really weird. And I'm like, why am I doing that? I don't just like take it off and redo it. So All um, right. I think that's a, that's a fun one as well. Um, and then I think any any good long thin pen. I'm thinking like a Lamy CP1. You know, you can you can twirl it in your fingers. You know what I mean? So you can you can get that thing going on that Drew's doing right there. I think a, a long thin well balanced pen like a CP1 would do great with that. And that's uh, you know that's got. That, that that gives you something vision can, be, can look very impressive and uh it's it's a very contemplative exercise you know what i mean could be uh, psychologically you know messing with people i don't know um but me personally i think the most baller move i mean these are all pens we're talking about here but me personally my fiddle thing since i'm really into puzzles is a rubik's cube um and i will often you know uh you know, it can sometimes be distracting if you're being really annoying about it, but if you get a really decently made cube, they can be pretty quiet. Um, and you can just kind of, once you've solved it a whole bunch of times, you can do it without having to actively think about it super hard. So if you can, like I'll do this sometimes in like meetings and stuff, I'll be kind of like thinking, contemplating, and I can be solving a Rubik's cube as I'm, as I'm going. And I think that if you're playing a game of chess against somebody, if you can be sitting there like one-handed solving a Rubik's cube as you're playing against them, what a what a mind game that would be with them, wouldn't it? Be like, yeah, I'm like so good. I can be I can be doing another puzzle as I'm playing this game against you. you psych them out, you know? Be twirling your knife in one hand and solving a Rubik's cube in the other. Boom. Move that move that castle across the board. Take their princess. You're good to go. I'm kidding. By the way, fun fact, I am trying to get, Rachel doesn't know how to play chess. She's never learned. She would be really good at it. 
she refuses. Like, she's not opposed to the game of chess, but I've offered so many times, I'm like, please just let me teach you chess, you would enjoy it. Like, it's, it's a fun game, you're smart, you would get it. And she just like, she just doesn't want to do it. She's like Joseph with the bike riding, or like playing outside. And like, that's passed on to Joseph too. I keep on trying to teach them and I can't get any of my fa- anybody in my family to sit down with me and learn how to play chess. So I don't know, we'll see if it ever happens. That's on my like bucket list. I told Rachel, I was like, I think one year for Christmas or my birthday or something, I might, maybe my 40th, maybe I'll be like, my, my gift is for you to sit down and learn chess. I'm gonna teach you chess. <laughs> so I don't know if she'll ever go with that, but that's what I got.